Now, before I made this video, I kind of wanted to wait a bit. I wanted to wait until somebody opened up like an ETB or something and we were able to get that information. Now, first and foremost, I want to point out that there's actually an ETB opening already, um, which makes me kind of confused on why we had the delay and the ETB doesn't release till August 23rd, I think. But uh, TCG Kings here on YouTube, it's a Spanish channel, did do a full opening. They did open up an ETB. They actually pulled an SIR. So if you want to check out that video, go right ahead. Uh, just a heads up though, they are a Spanish channel. So if you do not speak Spanish or not familiar with the language, you may not be able to understand what they are saying but you can at least take a look at the content that is available and watch him open up the ETV if you want to see. But one of the things I noticed is outside of the two gold energies, the card list that showed in the ETB is pretty much what Justin Basil's uh, site has. So I wanted to review this set real quick and just kind of talk about the set as a whole, because if you guys are anywhere on social media, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, you just see collector after collector being like, this set sucks. This set's on massive discount. Don't buy this set, buy singles, and that sort of thing. And I wanted to delve into this set because I do think this set is worth buying, but it's definitely not a set that's going to be treated like, uh, let's say Paldean Fetch was, or like the upcoming EV set will be where people are going to buy tons and tons of this to open up. It's going to be one of those sets where people are going to buy a little bit less product. And I think those kind of sets do fit really well into the Pokemon grand scheme of thing, because a lot of people complain about the Pokemon hobby, right? And we get too many sets, too many sets are large, but then when we get a small set that it doesn't have that many cards to chase, people are complaining anyways. So it's like, what do you want? Do you want a large set that's good, but large? Or do you want a small subset if they're gonna give us a subset amongst our four main sets that makes things a little bit easier because you don't have to buy as much product, don't have to buy as many singles. Like there's, there's no pleasing everybody in the hobby. And I think this set has its perfect place in the hobby because first and foremost, looking at the products themselves, you get the Greninja and Kingdra EX uh special illustration collections which come with two special illustration rare promos the first being sign on ahara's greninja ex my personal favorite card out of all of these simply because it's sign on ahara one of my favorite artists in the hobby ever since they made that hasuian zerwork v star and crown zenith and then you have the kingdra ex this is a lot of people's personal chase a lot of people love this card and to me if you're buying any product for your like sealed collection or if you're like an invest bro or something like that this might be the product you looked at because both of these pokemon are fan favorites both of these pokemon are beautiful promos and i do think these promos have great potential over time and i think these boxes have great potential over time i think these are going to be the boxes that most people are buying but if people are not buying these boxes, I do think they're going to buy this box. This is the King Gambit illustration collection, which is just a regular illustration rare promo that features this beautiful King Gambit card. This is another card I personally love because I'm a huge fan of King Gambit the Pokemon. But you got a Ponyard and Bisharp in four packs. This is basically your like EX box, your standard collection box, your special box that uh, retails for $21.99. This is going to be your cheaper box that a lot of people are picking up. There's obviously your ETB. I don't think the ETB is going to do as well as a lot of sets do. And it's mainly because the promo is not that interesting. It's just a Petrant uh, card that's not very playable. And it's not that fun. And you can also get the same Petra Runt card in terms of playability from the three pack blisters, uh, which features this promo. You could tell just by the attacks, it's the same card in terms of playability. So I don't see these two products being that desirable because first and foremost is Petra Runt or Pecker Runt, who is not a very popular Pokemon. Uh, sure, the Scarlet and Violet fans who played the DLC will love this Pokemon. I personally do. But most people are not going to know this Pokemon. Most people are not going to want this Pokemon in their collection. So I see these two products definitely going on massive sell because they're probably not going to move too well. Another product I don't think is going to move that well is the booster bundles because you don't get no cool promos with them. And sure, you get six booster packs, but we're going to look at the set in a second. And I think that's really going to hurt in terms of a lot of things because... 
there's no real reason to buy a ton of boosters of the set to chase anything. Now, I personally love opening up booster packs. That is my go-to. And I love collecting multiples of cards. I don't mind if I get multiples of a specific card, but there's a lot of people who only want one of a particular card. And with only so many cards in the set and this set being such a small set, I could see people buying a little bit of the, the early boxes like this one or this one. And then just being like, okay, I'm gonna buy singles for the rest of the route. And why do I say that? It's because the set is extremely small. Now, looking at the commons, the hollows, and the potential double rares that we're gonna get, uh, all of these match up pretty much with uh, TCG King's video here. They're, they're all in the set. Some of them are beautiful, like the Shinji Kanda Iron Moth here is stunning. I do think this Galvantula is also a beautiful artwork. And then you got a few different uh, double rares. I know Kingdra EX, there's been a couple of players that I've seen on social media talk about the potential of this card. I don't think it's gonna do anything, but it'd be interesting to see if they can make it work with all the other playable water type cards out there. And I think they said secret box is what they wanted to use with it. I'm not sure if that's the one I'm thinking of, but it was one of the ace specs. And I, if it gets playability, maybe this could be a double rare that's worth a few bucks. But with the promo, it might not make it as uh, expensive as like, let's say, Till Mask Ogre Pond. Then there's Reverum EX. I haven't heard a single person say anything about this card in terms of playability. So it's probably going to be one of your bulk double rares. Um, these three right here are going to 100% be in the running of probably the best playable cards in the set. I know a lot of people are hyped for the Dust Noir line, especially this guy right here because he, play, he he can be splashed in certain decks and his ability is really powerful. I know a lot of people are a big fan of the Sylveon, but it's just a bulk common. Uh, unfortunately, Sylveon did not get the illustration rare treatment. A couple of other beautiful cards like the Shinji Kanda uh, Slither uh, Wing. I know there's a few different dark type uh, EXs here. I don't know if any of these are playable. I haven't, I haven't seen any player talk about any of these three and testing them out. So I would assume they're not, but maybe one of them will have a shiny moment to become playable. And if it does, it might help these cards out. But for now, these all give the vibe that they might just be bulky Xs. Same with the uh, Pekarant here. And then for your steel types, your dragon types, and your normal types, nothing to really stand out. There are a lot of beautiful artworks. I think this Meowth is stunning. This Eevee is absolutely stunning. I'm a huge fan of Haxorus, so that whole Haxorus line is something I love. Genesect looks pretty cool, but nothing in here that screams playability. A couple of them have decent uh, effects that might be splashed here and there, but nothing that screams playable. Now the trainers, I don't know a lot of these names, but some of them I know are being talked about in terms of being playable. So it'll be interesting to see how many of these hold any potential value, because we do know there's been trainers in previous sets such as earthen vessel such as buddy buddy poffin that have held a couple dollars value which helps your return per pack but when it comes to these playable trainers there's a couple in here that are good i know i've seen a few players talk about this one i don't know if it'll be good but i've seen them talk about this one the lab here also has been talked about a lot i know some people were joking that this is the chase of the set for them like a lot of players um because they're really looking forward to that card now when it comes to the illustration rares this is actually where i think the set really shines i think the set has a great um like i'm not gonna say variety but a great collection of illustration rares i think every illustration rare in the set maybe besides tapu bulu i don't really like this one i don't like all the green i wish there was a little bit more contrast with colors so this one i don't really care for but i think all the other 11 i really love beware gives that horror movie vibe i don't know if y'all have ever seen winnie the pooh blood and honey but somehow i think of that movie when i see this beware like just a creepy bear just appearing out of nowhere scaring you persian done by an artist named whisker which is the most coincidental thing ever that makes it awesome but it looks beautiful it gives that giovanni vibe i know a lot of people are looking forward to that card zarua is also very popular chriselia is very popular the whole dust war nine done by james turner looks stunning i know a lot of people are going to be chasing this and 100 these are going to be your chase irs in the set just because not only will they have the playability aspect but they're very desirable pokemon with a very uh very desirable artwork so these three are amazing. I'm a huge fan of the Fracture card, especially because it's got the Axe used in the back. 
Q-Fence, pretty cute. Horsey could be really popular if everybody wanted to pair it with that Kingdra. So I think there's a lot of great cards in here and let's not forget Houndoom as well. So I think the illustration rares really shine here. And I think depending on how easy it is to pull illustration rares, it's what's gonna help this set a lot because it is a special set. If, if these illustration rares are somewhat easy to pull, I'm not gonna say like you get one every two packs like easy to pull, but if you can buy an ETB and you're pretty much guaranteed or you have a good chance of at least getting one illustration rare, I could see the set being opened up a little bit more because I could see people wanting to stack up on some of these and collect some of these and it might help the set out. But if these illustration rares have a hard pull rate, especially because we don't have booster boxes, we only have the collection boxes, the ETBs, that sort of thing. If these are really hard to pull, I can see this being a real problem for a lot of collectors wanting to open up the set because I think this is where the set strength lies. The full arts, none of them in here really scream awesome. These four right here, I don't see anybody really clamoring after them. Although I really love Monkey Dory's colors. I love the groovy background to it. And I really love the pink. Anytime a card that's full art is pink in the background, it just really gets my attention. And I love the contrast on Pekka Mountain here. Kingdra is probably going to be the most desirable of these six. And I think the rest of them are going to be under $2. Unless any of them are playable, I think the rest of them will be under $2. For, uh, full art trainers, uh, you got Colress. I think this is probably one of the more playable ones. Cassiopeia, not Penny, Cassiopeia. I know this is going to be pretty much the chase of the set. Uh, Janine and Zerosic. Zerosic, I've seen some people mention it, but I don't know if it's playable. This is the one I haven't looked up his effect, and since it's in Japanese, I can't read it. But I have seen Colress, and I think Colress has some playable potential. Um, as for these four special illustration rare Pokemon, this is where a lot of people are upset. A lot of people are arguing that you should have had Greninja and Kingdra in the set, and you should have taken these out and made these promos. Any two of these could have been taken out and made promos, and it would have been still nice, but you would have had chases in the set, such as Greninja and Kingdra, which would have helped balance, uh, balance out the set. And I agree with that to an extent. Um, nobody that I know of is chasing all four of these. Now, I do like the idea that they all go together, because if you look, there's, the chains are in all four artworks. They're all done by the same artist. So it's four arts that go together. But I can understand that a lot of people don't really know these Pokemon. They're from the newest DLC. So maybe a lot of people don't like them. And that is totally fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, no matter how right or wrong they think their opinion is, or we think their opinion is. But I can understand the point that why would you take out the two best cards and replace them with some Pokemon that most people will not know. But at the same time, I got a counter to that point. And I can kind of counter it with saying that having these four that go together all in the set together is kind of more thematic and more interesting than just putting taking two of them out and making promos and putting the other two in the set. So I can kind of understand both sides of the coin. It, it makes sense that they're all in the set together, but I can understand why people would want this one or this one in the set. Now, I am going to say this much. It is a benefit to have these as promos because while they are not going to be expensive as promos, in my opinion, it helps people get really beautiful cards for very cheap. Because imagine if this Greninja was in the set. Look what happened to Greninja and Twilight Masquerade. Nearly $300. So in my opinion, having these two as promos and having these in the set helps those collectors who can't afford Greninja from Twilight Masquerade, right? So. There is some pros to it, especially for your lower end collectors, for your collectors that can't spend hundreds of dollars on a single trading card. It helps them attain a cool Greninja if they can't get the Greninja from Twilight Masquerade. So I like them being in collection boxes personally, but I can totally understand why people are upset that they're in collection boxes. Last but not least, there's one special illustration trainer. You can see that here. It's only Cassiopeia. I think this is personally going to be the chase of the set. It does have a Sylveon in the background. Cassiopeia or Slash Penny is a fan favorite character. So I can 100% see that being a very, very playable card. Or not playable card, but chase worthy card for collectors. Now, there are actually five golds in the set. There is a darkness and a metal energy gold. But given the trend of all gold energies, those are probably not going to be more than five or six bucks. 
Um, you also have one that I actually think is gonna be pretty expensive. Earthen Vessel. Earthen Vessel Gold. If you guys don't know, Earthen Vessel Uncommon from I think Paradox Rift is the set. It's like a four to five dollar card. Look at Buddy Buddy Poffin Gold from Twilight Masquerade. It, it was, I, last I checked, it was in the, the $40 range, 30 to $40 range. This 100% has a chance of being a pretty decent gold. This is gonna be a gold that if you pull it, it'll have some value because players really like this card. This card is very powerful right now in the meta and pulling a higher rarity version of that card is gonna get a lot of players interest. So there's gonna be a demand for this card. Out of all the gold cards in the set, this is gonna be the card that has a high demand and that people are gonna want. So I 100% see this card holding some value. I can see this card, honestly, if I'm being honest, unless Dust Noir somehow takes off as an illustration rare, I could see this card being second in terms of price behind Cassiopeia and second in desirability behind Cassiopeia because there's gonna be so many players who are going to wanna to upgrade their reverse hollows or their uncommon versions to the gold ones. As for the other golds, um, I'm, I haven't seen this played too much. Maybe it is played, I can't really say. If it's a played card, if it's a card that's actually played, it'll be above 10. But if it's a card that's not played, it's gonna be one of those lower end golds. And then Pekarot, we have an SIR, so it's got a higher rarity. So it's not gonna hold much value, especially if Pekarot's not playable. So with that being said, looking at this set, it's, I'm gonna be honest guys, it is Champion's Path 2.0. But unlike Champion's Path, in my opinion, Champion's Path got saved because of the two Charizards. There was nothing else in Champion's Path unless you were a Gardevoir fan like me who actually liked the Rainbow Gardevoir. There was nothing in Champion's Path that was good. Suspicious Food Tin was not desirable. Dreadnought Full Art, Graplock Full Art, uh, Piers Rainbow, Kabu Rainbow. None of those cards people cared about. It was, With Champion's Path, it was strictly the two Charizards. And had Pokemon not put those two Charizards in Champion's Path, Champion's Path would have sucked. Absolutely, it would have been a terrible set. This set on the other hand actually has some really good stuff hidden within all the cards that people are overlooking. People don't want the Pekarant and the Monkey Dory SIRs, but there are the three Dusk IRs. There's the Horsey, the Houndoom, the Cresselia, the Fracture, the me uh, I wanted to say Meowth, the Persian. On top of that, you got amazing Full Art Trainers, an amazing SIR Trainer. You get three boxes that all have amazing promos in them, right? So to me, I think the set's getting a little bit too much hate for what it is because I think the set still has some great potential for a lot of cool stuff. Now, if you're a silk collector, 100%, I think this is a great product to invest in sealed because I don't see this product having a long lifespan because they're, it's just gonna sit on shelves. So people are not gonna order it and it's not gonna, it's probably not gonna be on Pokemon's radar to reprint this product. I actually think it's a great product to collect sealed because these boxes are really cool. And I think this box is really cool. But I think if you like opening packs, I don't think this is a bad product to get a little bit of to open. Now, am I gonna say go out and buy three cases of ETBs? Hell no, I think by that point, you'd probably be losing money in terms of like what you're trying to pull. Because I think within three cases of ETBs, you'd probably pull most of what you want and you could buy singles for the rest. But if you wanted to buy a couple of ETBs, a couple of illustration boxes, a, a couple of three pack blisters, and maybe a couple of booster bundles when they release in early September, you might actually have some fun with the set because there is still a lot of cool cards in here. And I think a lot of people that are hating on this set are the hype bros, the people who like hitting those $300 cards. And if you're somebody who doesn't really care about a card being three, $400, $200, and you just like collecting Pokemon cards like me, then this it will be a fun one to kind of kill time throughout August while we're waiting for the amazing upcoming Stellar Crown set. So if you're waiting for Stellar Crown, this is something that can kill your time unless you're really trying to chase your money every time you open up a booster pack. And if that's the case, go back to Twilight Masquerade. I know Twilight Masquerade still got that Grand Ninja at a very high price. Carmine still very high. I know Kieran and Eevee recently kind of went up in market value. 
So, if you really need to chase the dollar value of a pack, Twilight Masquerade is still available, Temporal Force is still available, Paradox uh, is still available. But if you want to uh, open up some new cards, a new set, and have fun with it, and most likely get these products at a discount because they're not selling as well as other sets, uh, I, I do think this will be a fun set to open. I'm going to be opening it up. I know when my ETBs arrive, uh, I got a couple of them that are ordered out. And then I think I'm going to open up a couple for myself because there are a couple of illustration rares I would like. I don't mind adding these cards to my collection as much as I don't really like the Okie Dogie and the Monkey Dory. I really like the Pheasantipity, but if I pulled these, they would absolutely go in my binder just as cool cards to collect. Cassiopeia, I would love to add to my binder as well. Any of these full art trainers. So... I actually think it'll be a fun set to open up and crack for a little while, but I will admit that this is the kind of set that once Stellar Miracle drops, or not Stellar Miracle, Stellar Crown drops, I will probably move on from it. This is not a set that I feel that I'd go back to, but I think for the month of August and the very beginning of September when the booster bundles arrive, I think I could have a little bit of fun with it before uh, uh, time ends. With that being said, guys, I am going to go ahead and call an end to this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this set. Is it a set you're excited for? Are you going to pass on it? Are you just going to be like, oh, I'll buy a few packs here and there, but buy mostly singles? What do you think? And also, let me know, what is your favorite card from this set? What is the card you're hoping to get the most from this set? I'm going to assume for most of you, if you're not going to say a promo, but you're going to say a card from the actual set, it's going to be one of these 12, because I think these are the 12 best cards in the set, and I think these are going to be the cards that many people are going to be hunting. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.